Hello. Hello. This is Dennis Pierce yep. with uh, Rain City Digs and Northwest Outdoor Lifestyle. And I'm here with John Burroughs at uh, Cascade Designs, parent company of MSR and Platypus and a whole range of other products we all know really well and uh, we all use and love. And we're here on the factory floor, actually in uh, the industrial part of downtown Seattle. And uh, John's been giving me a little bit of a tour and kind of showing me around their production facility. Great. <clears throat> now we are in the uh, one of the foam preparation areas for Thermarest mattresses. We have uh, about 70 different models of Thermarest and sizes, and they each often have different types of foam. Some of it has holes punched in it to make it lighter and more compact. Others uh, have different ways of accomplishing that sort of thing. Um, what happens is a sandwich of a layer of fabric, a layer of foam, a layer of fabric is put in a frame, put under the press. It comes down in hot platens, heat up the coatings on the fabric, bond it to the foam, and that is essentially how a thermarest is glued together, which is the first, the funding process. There are several more steps. We have to put the valves in, close it up, trim it, do all of that. And then these products, every one of them is stored for anywhere from 24 to 48 hours to make sure that there's no leak. So every single thermarest mattress gets pressure tested a minimum of 24 hours, sometimes 48 hours, to make sure that it has no kind of tiny little pinhole leak. So that's what this room is all about, and we'll see a lot of Thermarest mattresses here. I mean, it used to be you could get any color you wanted if it was orange. We right. called it rust, yeah. but uh, that was the color. We were like Ford and black. We were <laughs> rust. But, like, look at this one. This one's really bright. Surf shop in yeah, it. yeah. This is where we take care of mattresses that are repaired under warranty. Thermarest mattresses are given a lifetime warranty. We will either fix it or replace it. And so very, almost 90% of the time or 99% of the time, we can actually repair it. It just has a tiny hole in it. You know, somebody put it down on a sharp stick or their dog jumped on it with sharp claws or you know, something happened and it got damaged, we fix it for you and send it back. It's the Thermarest valves. You know, this is this plastic valve. It's right here. And uh, it's too bad it's not running at the moment, but uh, when it's running, these little things are running around and there's a hopper with one piece there and another piece there and a bunch of O-rings somewhere else. And it magically puts those three pieces together untouched by human hands. Amazing. And uh, this machine is just sitting here all day, dropping finished ones here, and the parts are coming in over there. This is the cap. This is the part oh, you yeah. touch and uh, have in your hand. And you notice they're, they're bouncing out of here. They get all juggled around here and lined up, and then they, they go marching off here like little soldiers. And it's over in there somewhere that uh, the other one comes around. They snap it together and you got a finished valve. Yeah. The, uh, the valve that is good for a life jacket turns out to not be good for a camping mattress because life jackets always live under the seat of an airplane. They never see any dirt. They never see exactly. any real world. These right. have to go live in the sand and the dirt in a much tougher environment. So, uh, so this is, you know, these valves were invented and developed completely by Cascade Designs for the Thermarest mattress. And that was done back in about 1985, and uh, we've continued to refine it and make them better, but uh, basically we've had that kind of a valve since about 1985. On a time, you got to heat it up, then cool it down, and then move to the next. Heat it up, cool it down. So it's, it's quite different than the, the old mattress where you came down hit it once heated up the whole area and then cooled it down and went off. It was just one hit. But this one, there's many, many wells. But by doing that, we've come up with these extremely compact, extremely lightweight, very well insulated mattresses. <clears throat> I mentioned that Thermarest has a medical division right. where we make uh, wheelchair cushions primarily wheelchair cushions, and we make a few other uh, pads that go in 
like uh, MRIs and other imaging machines we sell to people like Kendall Electric and Toshiba and m people that are in the medical business. And these um, uh, wheelchair cushions are being sewn. There's quite a bit of sewing involved and that's going on right here. So those get sewn rather than being welded? Yeah, there's a, just a lot of complicated little things on a wheelchair cushion and these are yeah. You can adjust the, you know, one side can be different than the other side. And these are very special, complicated wheelchairs for people, you know, that they live in a wheelchair. So this is a uh, foam cutting machine that we've only had about six months. And we're still kind of learning how to use it. But it's uh, amazingly flexible. It can cut very strange shapes, uh, any shape you can dream of. Essentially, it can cut it in foam. It cut out right here. Look at this. Oh, wow. I mean, imagine, this is the foam for the inside of a, thermo, a new Thermarest mattress. And uh, looks like that. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. And you see that there's the scraps going in the bag over there. Oh, yeah. Those scraps will be bundled up, sent down to Reno, where they will be turned into pillows, the filling for okay. pillows. And now we're in the middle of the MSR production area. And um, this is an area where we make water filters, stoves, snowshoes, uh, quite a wide range of different types of products. Some of them are seasonal, like water, you know, water filters are sold pretty much year round, but snowshoes are kind of just winter products. So you'll see some of the areas are pretty quiet. I think the snowshoe production is almost cut down to zero now. But the others pretty much make year-round uh, the various products. All of little parts like this are, uh, are made here from the, the raw brass. You see there's a lot of those threads, those holes. Very intricate little part of the stove. Yeah, there's a, there's a jet for a particular stove. And you can see there are many different, every one of them has a different number, there's something different about it. I, I, I heard that number some time ago, I don't know how accurate it is, but we make a lot of different things. Now this area is snowshoes, and you see that on the wall behind there, and this one's definitely kind of shut down right now. But I hear the big press going out here. The sheet metal comes in on that side, goes under the press, bang, comes down. The finished part goes out that sheet. These are stove parts? Yeah. And it comes down to 400 tons. That's cutting through a piece of aluminum about an eighth of an inch thick, just like it was nothing. Yep. So, so what we were seeing being cut out earlier uh, was the yeah. perimeter frame for right. the snowshoe. Right. Stamping could have been a part like this, which then was bent around, and this is one of the cross members right. in the snowshoe. Yeah. Yeah. Here they are. Here they are with the cross members all put together and riveted together at the back. And that's that piece that we saw being cut at the other place. So this is where we start with dirt and turn it into something that'll clean water. You take a certain kind of dirt and you mold it into this ceramic filter in a tube, which you can see through there. And uh, then that becomes part of one of the MSR filters. So I, I have 
had the, the old uh, MSR Waterworks yes. in my pack for boy, right. know, at least right. 15 years. Right, right. Well, this is where it where it sort of gets started. Yeah. Let's see, we can go on. Hi, sir. Uh, just, just as we test every thermal rest mattress for leaks, we fire up every stove and test it to make sure it burns properly and has no leaks or any any problem with it. So you've got a what about 20 or 30 stoves there, just the burner element being checked out. Look at all the water that you can boil with that. Yeah, yeah. A couple of them are sort of flaming up a little bit. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, but, uh, issues maybe. If that's not good, they'll come in and right. well, it, it just it's settling in as it warms up. The yeah. yellow goes away, and it's supposed to burn with a blue flame. Right. So now they're that they're coming on. He just put those in there, so um, to, to make sure they do not put out too much carbon monoxide. Okay. And. Uh, we think we are perhaps unique in that we test every stove for something like that because uh, it's just part of our heritage. We test everything to make sure when it goes out, it's, it's perfect.